I want to talk to you about patience, okay? Not the song. A little stat about me has nothing to do with what I'm about to talk about. I was never a big GNR guy. Never. And they like kind of blew up as I was growing up. Wasn't my thing. I want to talk about patience in life and specifically sports. Now, there's nothing easier than giving other people advice. Uh, it's very hard to listen to that exact same advice that you give out. Like people will always ask me career advice, right? I get asked that a lot. I guess I'm, I don't know, respected, which feels weird. But they'll say, hey, you know, what do I need to do to take it up a notch? How do I get to that next level, Rosillo? And I'll go, you know, look, kind of come up with a plan. You get to think of what you're capable of realistically. Sometimes it'll go a little slower than you want. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you feel like you've caught up and made all this ground. But if there's one thing I say over and over and over again is that the world, the rest of the world, is not on your schedule. Okay? And then as I say that to somebody the next day when I find out something's going wrong, I get super frustrated and not listen to any of the stuff I just said. But that's really important to remember, okay? You can have goals. You can want to be at certain places in life, but it's not always going to go according to the timetable that you've set for yourself. Now, the difference is, is some people eventually get there and some people never do. And when it comes to coaches, there's a lot of fan bases in college football looking around right now at the end of another regular season saying, what about us? Do we have the right guy? And there's a handful of coaches right now at major programs. Now, look, I'm not going to put Chip Kelly at UCLA in the same standard as Jim Harbaugh at Michigan or Tom Herman, who are less than a year ago, we thought after they beat George in a bowl game that Texas was back, and then I guess they're not back, and they change everybody on the staff. So you have these names that everybody wanted at one point, and now I'm supposed to collectively believe that none of these coaches are good at doing this job anymore? But here's the problem. As I'm speaking to college football fans about having patience right now, they're looking across the street at their neighbor going, well, wait a minute. Those guys don't have to have any patience when they win national titles. Why should I be patient in a place like in Ann Arbor? Well, you'd probably get me on that argument. Because if you go through the last 19 years of national titles, it actually has happened pretty quickly, except for two different guys. Now, Mac Brown won his first title at Texas in his eighth season, and Dabo at Clemson, it was his ninth season there, okay, and he was an interim at the very beginning, but every other national title has been within the first four years of that coach coming to that program. Okay, but let's look at the rest of the names going back to Stoop's first title in 2000. That was his second season. Larry Coker got it done in his first season. Russell, give me a break. Larry Coker inherited a massive, nasty Miami roster. Don't, hey, shut up. The list isn't done yet. Trestle's second season. Saban's fourth season at LSU. Carroll's third season at USC. Urban's second season at Florida. Les's third season replacing Saban at LSU. Saban's third season at Alabama. Chiswick's second season at Auburn. Jimbo's fourth season at Florida State. And Urban's third season at Ohio State. Those are all your national title winners since 2000. Other than Dabo and Mac, all those guys get it done immediately. So now you actually feel worse, right, if you're a Michigan fan? Well... Let's check in on the Michigan fan, because when you look in the mirror, you aren't honest with yourself, okay? And there's sometimes when my hair was still hanging around where I wasn't honest with myself either. But when I look at you guys and I look at your resume and you're sitting there mad that you lost to Ohio State again, which I get, you should be mad. But the idea that Harbaugh should be bounced, I just can't handle that. I feel like that's still another one of those things, despite how disappointing that Ohio State rivalry has gone for you with Harbaugh there since 2015, that I just think. You kind of need to accept it because Harbaugh is not really doing anything any different than anybody else who's had that job in a long time. He's 47-17 and 17 at Michigan since he first showed up. Your Wolverines are 1-15 against Ohio State in the last 16 times they've played him. One of those is technically vacated. I counted it, okay? The only time he's beaten him is that disastrous Luke Fickle year before I guess he was a decent coach at Cincinnati. Harbaugh, in the beginning when the criticism was still happening, felt ridiculous. They were number three in the last week in the college football playoff ranking in 2016. They were number four in the last week last season in 2018. And people act like this guy's going five and seven. Now, yes, I am a Harbaugh apologist. He gets to three straight NFC championship games in his first three years in the NFL. He turned Stanford into what they are today. And at Michigan, yeah, he's treated like it's a disaster. But that's always going to be the case when you don't beat Ohio State. If Harbaugh is happy to be there, and the decision makers are still happy that they have them, then I think you just got to kind of suck up the idea that right now you're not Ohio State. And I know that you expect it to be, especially when Harbaugh comes out with videos and the khakis and who's got it better than us and all that stuff. If there's one lesson in all this is that announce your presence with less authority perhaps 
don't have everyone hold you to an impossible standard or a standard that's not obtainable when the Buckeyes have been rolling like this, even with Ryan Day in his first year, which again gets back to that message of why should I have patience when the Buckeyes don't even have to the first year after Urban leaves. But who are you, Michigan? You're 58, 51, and 6 all time against Ohio State, but that's with a 19, 3, and 2 advantage up until 1927. I don't even know what the hell those games were. All right. You have one national title since 1948 in 1997. Now, you're going to tell me that you have nine national titles, but you're really claiming seven. And by the way, Bama has a handful of claimed ones that don't make any sense either. So, this is not an anti Michigan or anti Big Ten thing. This is an anti SID sitting around bored, just being like, hey, how'd your week go? We won three more national championships after I went through this gemologist notebook. So, if Michigan's being honest, yeah, it's disappointing, but it's kind of what you've been just with a guy that's paid more and a higher profile in Harbaugh. And again, if you want to start over again, feel free, but it really doesn't make any sense. There's a bunch of programs right now. Do you think USC wants Helton? No, they don't want Helton. The fan base doesn't want Helton, but they know they can't come up with anything better right now. Okay, Florida State was actually happy Jimbo left. They're like, ah, that's fine. Played for two national titles, one. We're good. We need a better offensive line in here. Well, guess what? You just fired Taggart in less than two years. Now, Nebraska is entirely different because I think they actually do know deep down it's never going to be what it was in the 90s. They gave Frost an extension after being in the preseason top 25 and falling all over themselves again this season. If you look around the country, there are pockets of programs everywhere that are so unhappy and so impatient. But what I tell you is that You're not alone. And if we do look at sports in the way that we have been too patient in the past, there's a lot of stupid things, right? There's a lot of dumb things that we've seen before, whether it was baseball players in the 80s and 90s where they had to stay in the minors for seasoning for three years. Now we're like, hey, maybe we just bring them up if they had the best arms. Kajana Carter, who I interviewed at Penn State one year, said, you know what? Joe Paul wouldn't let me play, and I want to transfer because Joe Paul's like, sorry, I just don't want to play freshman a lot. You're like, okay, or this guy's going to go number one in the NFL draft, but you're too stubborn in your ways. There are plenty examples of being patient in sports that haven't paid off. But when it comes to having a college football coach that goes 47-17, and all I can tell you is if you look around the country, there are plenty of programs that are in the exact same boat as you. You aren't special. But I know it's tough to tell you to have patience when your neighbor doesn't have to have any. <laughs>